As soon as videotape left the factory, it already started to break down. Information that is on the tapes is slowly dying, and if we don't preserve them, important historical content that's contained on them will be lost forever. What is MEPOPS? What is MEPOPS? What is MEPOPS? MEPOPS stands for Moving Image Preservation of Puget Sound. What MEPOPS does for the general public of the Pacific Northwest is provide access to digitized content. Our mission is to raise awareness about the magnetic media crisis, the alarm that the Association of Moving Image Archivists sounded to sort of bring awareness to the urgency of digitizing videotape. Audiovisual Archive in Australia has put a deadline of 2025 to say if you don't have your magnetic material digitized by this time, you're, you're screwed. They're figuring out the actual date, and it's right around the corner. Within 20 to 30 years of the time it's created, it's, it's disintegrating. The magnetic media crisis is sometimes called a gathering storm because the deterioration of the actual analog videotapes and then the increasing obsolescence and rarity of the players that play them back. So video is a little bit different from film in that video went through all these different iterations, all these different formats for consumer purposes, for broadcast purposes, whereas film, there were consumer formats, 616 millimeter, 8, 8 millimeter, but the principle of film has stayed pretty consistent and video requires all these different players. A lot of the formats that we work with stopped being manufactured years ago, and so we have to make sure that we take good care of them and tune them up, clean them, because a lot of the parts and players are getting harder and harder to come by, and so are the people who actually work on them. They're a dying breed, if you will. In some cases, people thought they were creating preservation copies by putting um, film onto videotape. In fact, that was that was not a great a great a great idea. Film is actually quite stable. The thing about older media types like film and negatives is that they are stable. Thirty years from now, you're going to be able to view them. Hundred year old nitrate film, in some cases, is still around and looks gorgeous. Whereas a video, for its manufacture, had a completely different different purpose. It was more of a kind of uh, democratizing um, format for shooting. It was a lot cheaper than film, so not only were professionals using it, but also amateurs and just the average person was able to buy videotape and record. There was plenty of access. You could watch your, your VHS tape of a film, but now that VHS tape needs a lot of help. We have to keep up. We can't just sort of settle back and say, okay, we're finished. Despite the fact that we're working with old materials that have their fixed content, the way we view that material, the way we store that material is going to just keep changing and evolving. A lot of the time, videotape is capturing real people doing real things. That might sound personal and boring, but it really encompasses so much of Seattle and Seattle's history that it's valuable to the general public and great for them to be able to access it. The public is able to see files digitized at MePops on Internet Archive where we create collections for each group so that they can, based on that institution, go in and view the content on their personal computer. Renting movies is convenient, but it's just not like going to the theater. Until now! New Movie Mates brings the theater experience to your home. Start with The Gabby Couple. I don't see what the big deal is about this woman. She is not that attractive, and you don't think so, do you? Um, no. I mean, I could see where, you know, some... People would think she's really beautiful. Oh. I mean, she is really beautiful, but... Oh, They're just like the couple well, that always that sits I behind you. I like really beautiful women. Oh, really? I mean, I mean, really, I like, I mean... Here's the cruncher. Choose on Cheetos for two solid hours. Now, add the explainers. And blonde, straight blonde hair. Remember? In the car chase scene? No, no, not in the car chase scene. In the scene where they're in the grocery store. 
What store? The store that was on the beach. Remember, they walked right oh, 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 Every yeah, theater yeah. has a snorting giggler. <laughs> <laughs> and no movie is complete without the phlegm guy right beside you. <laughs> Yes, you can enjoy a true theater experience with Movie Mates. Order now and you'll get Borderline Psychotic absolutely free. Let him have it, man. Kick his butt. What? Hey, man, I paid my money to come in here. Don't you shush me. Just watch the movie and shut up. Kick your butt. Bring the theater home with Movie Mates. <laughs> Cyrus was the first ruler of our Egypt, but his brother Seth the Hippopotamus slew him, and the land was divided between Seth and Horus, the son of Osiris. There was great loathing between them. Seth took Horus' eye and cut it in many pieces and cast it away so that his spirit could not live. Wise Tox found the pieces and put them together. And Horus slew Seth, and Horus was the pharaoh of the two kingdoms. The holy Ujat, the eye of Horus, is the eye of life. It shows us how things are divided and made whole again. It is the eye of the pious son Horus, alive forever with Tutankhamun, beloved of the gods, ruler of the two kingdoms. This Tutankhamun Minute is a presentation of KOMO Television. Jim, I need you to go over to Elliot Zoo and check the zookeeper's house for fire hazards. Let's go find Big Red, and he can go with you. Come on, Big Red. I will need your help, and Debbie already knows you are coming. But, but, but. Come on. I'll stay right alongside of you. Why, hello. That sure was quick. I haven't had time to put my friends in their cages, but they're all friendly and probably excited to see Big Red. This is my pet squirrel. He's very friendly and always gets into everything. And this is Sly, my pet snake. See, Big Red? They already like you. It's probably the first time that they have seen a talking fire hydrant. Well, the, fire, the fire started over here. The blanket must have fallen off the chair onto the baseboard heater. It's a good thing I had a smoke detector located close by. Smoke detector should be located on the ceiling and should be checked twice a month. Also, Portable heaters and baseboard heaters can be very dangerous. Things that can burn should be kept at least one foot away from all types of heaters. Here, let's check this out. I notice you use your fireplace. Make sure the screen is closed when you use it. Otherwise, a spark could land on the rug and start a fire. What about matches and lighters? Matches should be kept out of reach of younger children. Give them to an adult, or put them up high in a cupboard or a drawer. Let's check your bedroom. This way. Wow! 
You sure can tell that this is a zookeeper's bedroom. I notice you have an extension cord running under that rug. That could start a fire. They could become frayed. And when the wires touch each other, they could spark and a fire could start. Did you tell Debbie that if her clothes caught fire, stop, drop, and roll? Good idea. Everybody should know how to do that. I think Sly likes me. Of course he does. To be perfectly honest, I've never been that fond of traffic.
Winds coming from the. This just in breaking news. It's raining trash all around the world. We're going to take you to our foreign correspondents out in the field. Hello, I'm reporting live from New York City. It's raining trash and we are up to our ankles in it. Even here in the mountains of Canada, it's raining trash. Who knows when it'll stop? Hello, I'm reporting here in Cairo, Egypt. The Great Pyramid and the Sphinx are getting rain trash all over them. All of the god is very angry. Uh, uh, bonjour! It is uh, raining trash in the Paris, no? Oh, mon dieu! Hello. I'm reporting in London, England, and it's raining trash everywhere, and I don't know if London can really hold up. Konnichiwa, people son. Here in Tokyo, trash is falling all around us. We're up to our kimonos in it. Nyet, nyet! Oh, hello, comrades. Here in Moscow, Russia, it is raining trash all over. What shall we do? Yes, the question is, what can we do about these problems? Students in Seattle, Washington, are making videos about recycling. Check these out. It's a nice spring day, and we open our story with Jim and Big Red, the talking fire hydrant. They are preparing for a vacation in the Blackwood Forest. Let's see, we'll be gone for about two weeks. I better make sure I turn down the heat and that my house is fire safe. Good idea, Jim. Well, I think we're just about ready to leave. The backpack is filled. I better check and see that you have all the important things. Flashlight, maps, compass, first aid kit, chocolate bar, chocolate bar, chocolate bar. Wow! Jim, don't you think you have too much candy? Oh, well I thought it would be nice to have a special treat once in a while, but maybe I do have too much. We return to our story with Jim and Big Red preparing to start the long hike. Wow, this pack is heavy. Big Red, what's happening? Help! There is something wrong! Hold still, Big Red. Maybe if I push this button, it'll help. It's not that one. I wonder what'll happen if I turn this knob. No! 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 But it was too late. Jim had turned the wrong knob, and Big Red started spinning and going back in time. He finally slowed down and stopped. Wow, where am I? It sure looks different. Why, why, who are you? I'm Ada. This is Bran and Bo. And this is my pet, Liz. Mm. Wow, a dinosaur. Mm. Oh, she's very friendly. Mm. Where did you come from, and what are you? I'm a fire safety expert from the future. Where I come from, I teach people fire safety. The future? Maybe you could help us. We always have fires. Could you come to our house and teach us fire safety? Why, 
Yes, I'd be happy to. Where do you live? Just follow us. Big Red went with them to their house. It was built into the side of a mountain and was made of rock. Liz was still curious about Big Red and stayed right beside him. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a large house. I need to hear the news to find out what is happening. Do you have a TV? TV? What is that? TV is a box that has moving pictures on it that talk to you. Oh, never mind. I think I would confuse you if I tried to explain. This place called Future? It sure sounds different than our world. Let's check your kitchen. Your stove sure looks different than ours. Make sure you do not get too close and catch your clothes on fire. Also, those pots get real hot. Be careful when using them. Thank you, Big Red. We will be careful. I think Liz wants you to play with her. She sure is friendly. What are those? Oh, those are matches. Matches? They sure are big. You should store them up high where they will be safe. Matches are not toys and should not be left laying around. If children find them laying around, they should be given to an adult. Do you have a fire department to help put your fires out? No, but we have this large bell that we ring when we need help. Everybody brings a bucket of water from the river. What do you do? We have telephones and everyone is supposed to have their fire department emergency number displayed by the phone. We just call and the fire department arrives quickly. Wow, I can see how important it is to have a fire department. Do you know what to do if your clothes catch on fire? Well, I, I, I think I'd run down to the river and I'd jump in. No, 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 if you run, the fire would get bigger. You need to stop, drop, and roll. And put your hands over your face. That's very important information. We will tell everyone in our village. Liz, I'm going to put you in charge. Then everyone will know how to do that. We sure were lucky to have you come visit us. Are you going to stay? I know Liz would just love it. Well, I don't know if I have a choice or not. My friend Jim was working on me, and he pushed this green button, and then turned the red knob, and the next thing I knew... No! No, Liz! Don't, don't do that! <coughs> What have you done? But it was too late. Liz had pushed the green button and turned the red knob. And again, Big Red started spinning. And the years kept going by, this time in reverse. And the next thing Big Red knew, he was back with Jim. What happened? Where have you been? Are you playing games with me, Big Red? Why, why, no. You won't believe this, Jim, but I have been back in time with cave people and dinosaurs. Come on, Big Red, you're playing games with me. Let's get going. We've got a long hike to Hidden Lake. But, but, it's true, Jim, and they were nice. Come on, Big Red, catch up to me and let's start hiking. But Jim, I'm not playing games with you. Why, there was this baby dinosaur named Liz, who really liked me. Yeah, yeah, I know, Big Red. She was probably 10 feet tall. I just can't figure out how you disappeared on me. Let's go. Really, Jim, it did happen. 
There were volcanoes, flying dinosaurs, and they didn't know anything about fire safety. Big Red was wondering how he was going to convince Jim that he had gone back in time and helped teach fire safety to the cave people. They continued on their hike, unaware of the friendly animal that was following behind them. Alaskan Way Viaduct. It's been called dirty, nasty, ugly, and dysfunctional. Hi, I'm Matt Smith with the Committee to Save Big Ugly Things. In the 80s, we stood by as the lower Queen Anne blob was torn down. In the 90s, we watched helplessly as our kingdom was imploded. Now Mayor Nichols is threatening to take away the biggest, ugliest thing of all, the viaduct. And given the opportunity to replace it with an even bigger, uglier viaduct, he balks. But wait, it gets worse. He wants to replace it with this. A beautiful, expansive, urban, waterfront park. We at the Committee to Save Big Ugly Things say enough is enough. Here's what the mayor's office is saying about the waterfront park. One, it will open up magnificent views. Fact. Unobstructed views decrease worker productivity by 9%. Two, it will be a great place for family picnics. Fact, picnics increase ant and fly populations by 12%. Three, the park will be a wonderful place for lovers to take a romantic stroll. Fact, 37% of unplanned pregnancies are preceded by romantic activity. We say stop the madness, and you can help. Save the big ugly viaduct. And consider this, if Mayor Nichols does get rid of the viaduct, you know what's next. I'm Matt Smith with the Committee to Save Big Ugly Things. Please help. something you might find in your attic. Oh, darn it, see it. No attic, see it. Pardon? A machete. A machete. Goodness. What, do you <laughs> keep? what and who do you keep in your attic? A machete. Now I need a place uh, anywhere in the world and the universe. Detroit. Pardon? <laughs> Detroit. Detroit? Do you need a particular place in Detroit? The Renaissance Center. The Renaissance Center in Detroit. Okay. Now, I know you can do this. <laughs> Whenever you hear the word machete, I want you to go bum, ba dum, bum. Can you do that? Say, 
I went down the street and said, Darren, look, there's a machete. <laughs> Ooh, you guys are good. <laughs> Let's try one more time. Look, somebody dropped their machete. <laughs> Ooh, right, this is exciting. Now, <laughs> uh, we lost our sound effects, so this is where we really come together. Whenever you hear someone that gives some, says something that needs a sound effect, like I walked across the creaky room, I need that. I need that sound. Like, oh, you've you, you practiced. You took one of those uh, LA uh, local college courses, didn't you? Squeaky room noises. Uh, or let's say I put my lock in the key. Ah, check it Put my key in the lock. Um, what oh, I turn on my chainsaw. All right, thank you very much. We're now going to present to you Secret Asian Man. <laughs> it was a dark summer night, December 1951. The summers were longer back then. <laughs> Most nights are dark, I guess, but that wasn't the point. The point was I was in my office, alone, pacing around the office. Pacing, pacing. In capture. <laughs> I walked out of my life. I was, uh, I hadn't had a case in a long time. I was listening to one of my favorite records. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis's greatest hits. <laughs> <laughs> the Japanese version! <laughs> At 16 speed! <laughs> Suddenly I heard a, a strange ringing sound. It was loud. I didn't know where it was coming from, so I walked over to the creaky window and opened it up. I looked outside, it was raining. In fact, it was pouring! I could hear the thunder in the distance! I could hear the lightning! I always wonder what lightning sounded like. But the ringing persisted. All I could see was some kids playing basketball in the street. Hearing birds. 
or wedding bells. And suddenly I noticed I was smack in the middle, middle of the Renaissance Center in Detroit, Michigan. I searched the first floor. And I came upon a dead body with a machete stuck in it. I'm the Chief Asian Man. I'm Johnny Parker. You're probably wondering why I'm wearing pantaloons <laughs> and listening to hot music. Well, it's kind of low right now. <laughs> we turned it down since the murder happened. Uh, actually, I was wondering what pantaloons were. He is this renaissance part of the costume. Right. Now I hear the hot music. <laughs> ah. So, what can you tell me about this dead guy with a machete stuck in his back? <laughs> well, that he's dead and there's a machete stuck in his back. <laughs> Let me ask you a few questions. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's your relationship with this man? Well, we dated a couple of times. You know, he was my boss, but nothing ever happened. We found we didn't like each other at different signs. Uh, did you get any uh, relative? Uh, yes. Uh, what happened to him? Well, a couple went to Detroit, uh, the south side. Several went to. No, no, no. What happened to him? Oh, him! Yeah. Well, it looks like he got stabbed with a machete in his back. Was there anything unusual, like bothering him or anything at the time? I couldn't tell. Well, you can tell me I'm working on a case. <laughs> oh, well, there was this big row. A big what? Row. A big row. Row. Mm. Row. A row. Okay. And uh, it was like a fight, except. More row like. <laughs> okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah I How about you, sir? Oh no, thanks. I'm married, but you're a nice guy for asking. Did <laughs> he have a girlfriend? Oh yes, he did. A very nice girlfriend. <laughs> How'd she look? Oh, she had one bad eye, so she kind of looked around like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I do. Can you give her a call? Oh sure. Hey, Francine. <laughs> I was confused, and not as confused as he was. I had to step aside as he came strolling into the hotel. It was the most gorgeous thing I had ever laid eyes on. <laughs> he was bounding around the lobby. Oh, and her lovely bee beehive hairdo. Uh, what's your name? Francine. Francine, and uh, uh, do you know this guy? Yes. No he, he was my boss. Your boss? You don't say. What time was he supposed to come in? She work? did say. I don't know. What can you take a guess? Uh, about 10 o'clock. You can't take a guess until 10 o'clock? No. <laughs> I was going to meet him. He was going to give me the package. I think it was a machete. <laughs> I was going over my clues when suddenly I saw a raging rhinoceros. <laughs> Darn it, you know, we try and keep these things out of here. She's, she let out a huge scream. So I grabbed it and I stuck it under the deck. <laughs> Next to the machete, I see. <laughs> Did you have any problems with him? Any problem, you know, well, grief, any gripes? Well, we had a little argument. Ah, what did you say? I said we had a little argument. <laughs> I can see we're getting nowhere. <laughs> Suddenly I had an idea. <laughs> I know who did it. You did it. No, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> and you did it. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was me. I loved him. We had an affair, and then I found out he was messing around again. So I, I took the machete! <laughs> and I put it in again! She was rambling, so I slapped her. <laughs> Five times. She was fast. Here's my uh, piece of handcuffs. Here's my hotel key. Get out of here. <laughs> As for you. Yes, secret agent man. Thank you for solving the case of the murdered body with the machete in there. <laughs> Get out of here. Take him with you. Get the machete. Come on, we got another place to go, buddy. It was such a nice day, I figured I'd walk back to my office. I... I looked up at the sky and I saw 747. 
It was going down and it crashed right into a bingo parlor. You know, the angry Chinese bingo players. <laughs> oh well. Another game, another night, another case. So, glad to see you today, Asian man. Excuse me, I'd like to buy a stereo. <coughs> what uh, stereotype? What stereotype? <laughs> Don't break this part, can't use the bathroom. You must be the janitor, I presume. No, sir, he's a local bus. Get your ass the back of the bus. Time out, it's time for you to get it. I ain't no brother from another planet. Just an American, my blood. We think we have the suspect to the robbery on the grounds at the Five Point Shopping Center. Gaines is out of the car checking it out. 10-4, keep me advised.
back out, please, now. This is an emergency. I want you to just leave your food right where it is and get out now. Quickly. Quietly and carefully. Now. As soon as I see her, I'll kill you. Everybody, quietly. Come on. Come on, just leave your food there. Come on out. Now. Come on, move. Move. Put that tray down. Come on. Come on out. That's it. What's your name? Let's see what. Carefully. Don't panic. Mine's Wally. Lady, I want you to get your employees out the back way. I don't want anybody hurt. But my no. lunch. I just paid for Lady, my lunch. Lady, just get the hell out of here. That's it. Come along. Come on, folks. Move out. Just keep moving, lady. Noel, call the dispatcher. We're going to need help. This kid's grabbed the girl as a hostage. Come on, folks. Keep moving. That's it. Everybody. Let her go, boy. Oh, man, I can't. You know I can't. Are you listening? Here's what I want you to do. And slow. Now, slow. Underhanded. You throw your gun over there by that column. <laughs> Now, sit down. You're making me nervous. All right, son. What are you gonna do? I want to tell you about the big KVIK love game. Any song I play that doesn't have the word love in the lyrics, baby, if you hear one, call me. Because the first one to call will be eligible for a fabulous love gift. This is John Newman in KVIK Mobile News Unit number two. We're on our way to the Five Point Shopping Center, where a disturbance has been reported at the Maynard Cafeteria. Although we have few details at this time, a gunman is apparently holding a teenage girl hostage in the cafeteria. We'll have the details in about five minutes. Wrong move, man. Not cool at all. Hey, let's dedicate this next big one from the licorice sewing machine to the not-so-cool cat at Maynard's Cafeteria and to the folks at Papa Dad's Leaning Tower of Pizza. Let me get a doctor for the girl. Her name's Betsy. Why won't you talk to me? Well, you're supposed to talk to me. You know, like they do to people standing out on window ledges. Well, I'm, uh, I'm not a very wise man, Wally, but uh, all right, let's, let's see what we can figure out. See if you can figure this one for me. There's people out there. Who are they waiting to see, Gord? Me? You? <laughs> Betsy. Who's the beautiful, sad stranger? Oh, for Christ. 
Christ's sake, Wally, you're talking stupid. Nobody's gonna die. Nobody's gotta die. Now, look, it's simple. You see, you haven't done anything, really. You're not really in that bad of trouble. What do you know about trouble? And what do you know about me? Now, how do you know I haven't done anything? A few years in jail, stupid. That's the worst that... You're the stupid one, stupid. It's not that easy, stupid. I don't want to listen to you, stupid. You sit down. Just sit down! Wally, why did all this happen? What? Why? I don't know. Why are we born? Things just happen. Damn it, Reverend, will you be quiet for a minute? Now listen, none of this needs to happen. If we can just talk this over without all this double talk, we can go home. Bull! Shut up! Janice, guess what? The slides from Trinidad and Tobago are here. Yeah, they're ready. Okay. All right, listen, I'll meet you in 15 minutes in the park. Okay? All right, bye. Ha, ha, ha. 